Fancy seeing you here. My name is Madison. It's nice to see you. I'm glad you could make it. How it is already time for a January wrap up? I don't understand. But at the same time, I also feel like I read some of these like six months ago, not four weeks ago. Time do be weird like that. Regardless, welcome to the January wrap up. If you guys follow me on TikTok, you will know that I have had some slow reading months as of late. And I am proud to say that I read nine books in the month of January, which I know is not like show stopping, but considering the months I've been having, I will take it, I will take it and I will run with that number. I also had like quite literally, maybe the best reading month of my entire reading experience. So many good books, so many five stars, so many highly anticipated that actually lived up to the hype, which like, tell me if there's a better feeling because I know the answer is no. But I won't ramble on way too much like I usually do. We're just gonna get into it. Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. You guys, you guys, this is my most anticipated without a shadow of a doubt. I started it in December of 2023. I started it the day it came out, but then life got really busy. Realistically, I read this in January. I'm counting it as January because I read this in January. I very much so finished this in January. I don't know why I'm explaining so much. I loved this, loved this a lot. I sobbed a lot, but like, what is new? I'm an emotional reader, you knew that. You knew that about me. I'm a big cry while I'm reading girly because what is the point if there are no tears? That is my motto. Did I like this as much as Divine Rivals? No, I did not. This is like a clean five-star read for me. Nothing at all was wrong with it. Divine Rivals just was like even better. Divine Rivals was like comparing gold to apples. That's a strange analogy. You get it though. I literally cannot tell you a single thing about what happens in this because it picks up right where Divine Rivals leaves off. But Divine Rivals follows Iris and Roman in a world that kind of gives historical fiction. Like there's no modern technology. It's really, really light fantasy. It is fantasy for romance readers through and through. There's a war going on between two of the six gods that have been dead and buried because two of them have come back to life and they're waging war against each other about old unrequited love. And they are enlisting humans in the process and Iris's own brother, Horus, ends up going to fight in the war. So Iris writes letters to him every single night on the typewriter that her grandmother gives to her, her like most prized possession, until one day she gets a letter back that says this isn't for it. Turns out her and her rival have these magically connected typewriters. He knows that he's talking to her, but she doesn't know that she's talking to him. It's so romantic and heartfelt and heart-wrenching and the way that that one ends and then goes into here and then she kind of flips the script in this one a bit so Iris gets to know what it's like to be the one who knows who she's talking to and knows who she's in love with but like can't, can't share it. It's a beautiful duet. I recommend it through and through. I did like Divine Rivals better, but I think this was a great second book. Like, I don't know how you would follow Divine Rivals. Now we have like what has arguably become my new Roman Empire, okay? You guys were right on this one. I regret leaving this for any span of time on my bookshelf. Hold me accountable. If you bitches know that I have some six star read sitting on my bookshelf, you let a bitch know. Wow, was I mad at myself for not reading this sooner? This is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. If you're watching me right now, you're watching other booktube and you're watching other book talk, you know that this is everyone's Roman Empire. The banter, amazing. The relationship, amazing. The found family, amazing. Everything that you want in a romanticy is here. Like you can tell Miss Lauren Roberts was a romanticy reader and was like, I like this in this book, I like that in this book, I don't like when that went like that. She was like mixed and she made the romanticy book for romanticy lovers. It is it's YA, which I sometimes steer away from, but it doesn't feel YA. It was so beautiful and well done. I love Peyton and Kai. I am desperately waiting for Reckless. I'm waiting for the novella to pre-order both of them. Don't you even worry. If you somehow have not heard, this follows Peyton and Kai in a world where there's been this like plague that goes through and everybody either died or developed powers. And if they didn't develop powers, the king is killing them because he does not want any ordinaries in his people. He only wants elites. So they hunt down the ordinaries and Peyton herself is an ordinary, but she fronts as a psychic because she got really good at reading people. She ends up in an alley one day, saving the prince that is the future enforcer of the royal army and a bunch of people see her do it. So they vote her in to the purging trials. Think kind of like Hunger Games, but like less necessary death, I guess is the good way to put it. And now she is going to the castle to compete against all of these people with crazy powers and a very unlikely relationship, enemies to lovers, rivals to lovers. But if you want, who did this to you? 
he says it three times. I'm just saying. Tell me how. I read these two books and then this in one week. Name a better reading week. I dare you. This was a true five star read and I know, I know it's a crime that I have not read Two Twisted Crowns yet. And you guys keep telling me that it is a crime. I want to know what happens so badly, but I also feel like you guys want to know. So I need to fit it in to some sort of video. I read this entire book in one singular day and I finished it at 2.30 in the morning and I seriously thought about picking up the second one and starting it. This is like one of the most unique fantasy I have ever read. The magic system in this is so cool. Like it's gothic, it's dark, it's twisted, but it's romantic. It's what you want in a book, but like in a new setting and element. This book follows Elizabeth, and from the very beginning, we know that there is something or someone that lives in her head with her, but we don't know why or where it has come from. And we also know that she contracted a plague, very similar to Powerless, that when children contract it, they either die or develop magical powers, but the king does not want them to have magical power. So they kill the children if they get infected and her dad was the head of the task force that was tasked with killing the kids and he couldn't do it. So he sent her to live with her aunt and everybody assumes that she did not develop any magical powers, but she has this thing living in her head with her. The magic system is built off of like these providence cards that are very similar to tarot cards that when you tap them, you, you get the power. But if you use them for too long, it turns into something really dark and ugly. It's so cool and unique. Like one of the most interesting magic systems I've ever read. A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I finally finished this trilogy. I was putting it off for a really long time because A, I wasn't done the entire Caraval trilogy first and if there's one thing I regret, it is not actually reading and finishing Caraval before going into Once Upon a Broken Heart. I read Once Upon a Broken Heart, The Wild of Never After, all three of Caraval and then this. And I know that this entire trilogy, but especially this one, hit harder knowing everything that happens in Finale and Caraval. Like there are things you find out about the ending of Finale that are answered in this book. Like more context is added. I actually really enjoyed this. I didn't hate it as much as a lot of people hate it. At first I gave it like a 4.75 because I really liked it was very much so what I was expecting out of this book but then I haven't thought about it a ton since and like the ending is a little bit rushed I agree I get that people wanted more to happen but also like the font in these books massive they're short reads like I feel like not a lot happened in all three of them it filled its purpose as the last in the trilogy it was not my favorite in the trilogy I liked it a lot this book follows Evangeline and she goes to a fate which are the gods in this world in the very first one because the guy that she thinks is her true love is set to marry her stepsister but the fates in this world they grant witches but in a way kind of fucks your life up like a lot of it you get what you asked for but like not really what you want and that sends her on a magical journey with Jax the fate in the magnificent north it's so fairy tale whimsical and if you have not read this yet i totally suggest it but try caraval first because if you're not gonna read caraval you can go into this but then you can't go back and read caraval because it just it doesn't hit the same i could write on this forever about how much this series means to me and i, I will spare you you can watch my last reading vlog that came out because like you can watch the emotional roller coaster that this book sent me through i did did just order a special edition of the atlas six why do i need two copies of it i don't i do i do because this series altered my brain chemistry as all of olivia blake's books do beautiful it's a confusing hard series to understand it's really in-depth it's really convoluted there every little thing that is said at the beginning of atlas six or throughout the series ends up mattering like it's all nuanced and it all adds to the messaging she does such a beautiful job of creating such understandable characters she basically made this magical world where there is the alexandrian society which is from the Alexandrian Library, which is a library that was thought to have burned down, but it wasn't. And they made a secret society with all of the knowledge of the world. And every 10 years, six witches, but really strong ones, Medellines, are chosen to compete for five spots. She took that world and she made six very strong, distinct personalities and just let them play out how it would. The interpersonal relationships are what drives this. The dark academia, magical version of our world as we know it is just the backdrop that it happens within. It deals with so much philosophy, metaphysics, the concept of time, and so many like deep more meaning messages this hits me to my core every single time the character arcs of all six of them in this is beautiful and it makes sense like you're in it with them atlas complex really did a number on my brain and i'm thankful for it but like i needed something just like random to pick up so i ended up picking saint's affair up on my kindle i read it in like a day it's like a short little novella and if you guys have read haunting adeline this is like sibby's story in haunting adeline i didn't love this a lot i think the writing was really cool i think the exploration of sibby's mental illness in this especially if you've read haunting and hunting adeline and you know what her mental illness is and like what's actually going on while reading this. It's really interesting, but it's also like disturbing. Like it's really, really smutty, but if you know 
you know it made me a little bit uncomfortable it had hg carlton's like flair i enjoyed the writing and i enjoyed the plot a lot and then we got daddy zaid in this i love like seeing that same scene from another person's perspective loved that other than that uncomfort i also think that credence just ruined me for spicy books because i get like a feeling when i read them now i don't know when that'll go away this plot line was good it was too smutty and group for me. Era of Broken Fate by Mads Rafferty. She sent this to me like right when I started my book talk journey and I read like a hundred pages of it as soon as I got it but I was having a really hard time disconnecting from the fact that I knew the author. Like I was going in too much wanting to love it so much that I was just like I couldn't read it with a clear head. Like I couldn't get over that it was Mads that wrote it. Like I was scared that I wasn't gonna like it so I was like you know what you're just reading a book take a step back from it for now and go back to it when you can like separate that it's book and the author. And I actually think this is a very good first book for Matt. The plot line was really interesting. It moves kind of fast. I will say that like there's a lot of problem resolution that happens semi quickly, but the plot line is really interesting. Like it gives what the romanticies that we all read gives. And I cannot believe this is her first book. The cover is so beautiful. And I'm really excited to see where she takes the second one because it was entertaining. I read this really fast. We have officially begun our prep for February 13th. I reread Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates in the month of January, moving on to reading The Long Way Home and Great Undoing. And and into the dark because Dunn was so kind enough to part one even know who I was and to send me an arc are you kidding me if to say there were tears would be the understatement of the century I had one minute small manifestation goal that I really wanted to happen all of my friends in real life knew once I was like really doing book talk I was like there's just one thing that I would really love if it could happen just it would be like such a oh my god mom I made it moment and that was getting an arc of a Magnolia Parks book and just for it to be the very first book that has come out since me starting my book talk journey like I sobbed I called my mom sobbing I called all of my friends sobbing everybody knows so if two have gotten it it's just like the craziest thing in the entire world. These hit so much harder the second time around. I've uncontrollably sobbed like 14 times. Massive tears. I also am noticing so much more in my reread. If you don't know what Magnolia Parks is, part one, how did you even find me? Because if you've ever seen me ever before on the internet, it is probably me raving about these books. I have a tattoo from The Great Undoing on my arm. Also, you guys ask about that all the time. The quote is, it's the great undoing of my heart as I know it, which someone says in The Great Undoing. I don't even want to say what it is. Basically, London High Society meets Gossip Girl, but it's super toxic and fucked up and messy and like, and such painful loves. It is a group of friends, the box set that have been friends since they were very young. And Magnolia and BJ are both in that box set. And then in the second and fourth book, we follow Christian and Daisy. Christian is also in that box set. And Daisy is the younger sister of the biggest crime boss in London. It's so good. Basically a very dramatized, fucked up, sad, larger than life love. And I know, a love that we should not accept in real life. Part one, I I feel like I have even more appreciation for what Jessa did in this series now because there is so much foreshadowing up to the very end of The Great Undoing in these first two books. Like there are so many things that were clearly already lined out. Like the story execution was amazing. Jessa, I really noticed it the second time around. Two, I am noticing so much more how round and full circle the characters are. Same idea as what I find with Ollie Blake, where like there's so much mundane and normalcy in the characters, but because you're getting that normalcy, the characters are so full-fledged humans, real people in my brain for me. I noticed so much the second time around. These books mean more to me than quite literally anything in the world. And upon the reread, like they're sitting so much heavier and with so much more importance in my brain. I also quite literally have the memory of a squirrel. So like in a lot of ways, it feels like reading it again for the first time. You could lock me in a room with just these books and like I would not go insane. It's a stretch. You probably think I live with them in London. I am doing a full reread video and then reading Into the Dark. So that'll be on my channel around the time Into the Dark comes out so we can experience it together. This was quite literally one of the best reading months I've ever had. So to be starting the year off with this immaculate list, I'm jaw dropped. For February, I am letting scratch off cards choose my TBR for the month. So if you guys have any prompt ideas, let me know in the comments below because that video will be up in the next couple days as well. I hope you guys had such a good January and that you have just as good of a February and I hope you have an amazing reading month and I hope to see you in the next one. Love you. Bye. Trying to pick up all these books at once is a crime. Oh my god.